Hello and welcome to the first FYFD webcast. Today I have as my guests, Professor Tad Truscott and PhD student Randy Hurd at Utah State University. Their work has been featured on Science Friday, the BBC, Wired, and I don't know if any other fluid dynamicist can say this, but Saturday Night Live. Yeah, <laughs> live from New York. <laughs> You guys just had a paper that came out in Nature Communications that's actually on the bouncing of these elastic Waboba balls. Whoops, there went one. Fortunately, I have two more. We were out there just skipping rocks. We used to live in um, Newport, Rhode Island. We would go down to the beach there at Sandy Point Beach and we'd throw rocks. And we found, you know, these, these balls and we were like, these are awesome. And so, of course, my nephew wanted to see what it looked like in high speed. So the next thing we knew, we we had taken it to the lab, taken some pictures, showed him, and you know, I guess the rest is kind of history. And I just wanted to say it was really fun for me because uh, I've been gearing up for grad school for a while, and you kind of get this this talk about you know grad school is totally worth it, but don't think it's just going to be fun and games. And so when I was talking to Tad Prescott, and he said, "Yeah, I really just kind of want you to study this toy for your, your PhD thesis," I was like, "Wow, this is this is maybe as good as it gets." You want to show us a little bit about the setup that you've got back there? We have a ping pong ball, a boba, a racquetball and a baseball. We're going to see what bounces the best on land. Here we go. This is our last hope. Everybody, cross your fingers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I got it back here. We actually have a listener question. They would like to know what other toys you have there in the lab because they think it looks like a mixture between a car workshop and a kindergarten. <laughs> I love this. All right. <laughs> Toy is maybe a dangerous word to use for this, but this is uh, when we were doing our, our urinal experiments, um, we wanted to be anatomically correct. We kept calling it a urethra, which sounds awful. Like, can you pass me the urethra? We decided a more scientific name would be the Water Angle Navigation Guide. If, if a male is aiming for a traditional wetted urinal, something like this is going to happen. And see if we see any difference. Oh! Ah, that looks like your khakis are going to stay dry. Those of you who are watching, you just saw the urine black hole. Joe says, I'm wondering if you've done things in the lab just for art. You know, if you put two pieces of paper together with paint in the middle and you rip it off, you can create this technique called decalcomania. Uh, it actually turns out the thickness of the film, the type of fluid, and the speed at which you pull it will actually determine how many ridge lines are formed. And so the physics behind that actually we can unravel, which is really exciting. It's really fascinating to me. Watching an artist, it's like they understand the physics so well. You know, I'm trying to unravel it mathematically or model it somehow or, you know, and then image it. But and these artists, they just go in there and like they just do these cool things with their hands and then before you know it, you know, it's a face or it's a whatever they wanted it to be. And you're just like, what? And, and they don't know anything about the math. They just know how to do it. They just have a feel for it. I think that is, that is cool. I've been asking a whole lot of questions. I don't know if you guys had any questions that you wanted to ask. Today. Why the name then? Why the name? Because obviously it matters, right? I mean, we pick names, right? There was a meme on Tumblr in 2010 when I was looking at starting the website, and there were all these blogs that were F yeah this and F yeah that. And I said to myself, well, why not? F yeah, fluid dynamics. <laughs> Where do you guys get your inspiration? I think often we're kind of just inspired by everyday life. You know, whether, you know, we're just cooking a curry or we're like what doing something on? outside and we're wondering, <laughs> you know, something as simple as going to the beach. We're like, why is that happening? And of course, I think those kind of questions are interesting because uh, maybe, I think they're just things that everyone can relate to. But before we do that, I just want to show you, this is the largest ball we tested. Uh, for the Waboba project. It's like softball sized? It's a little bigger than a softball, but it's about four inches in diameter. You can see my hand there holding it, mm -hmm. put it next to my face. It's the size of a very large tumor. Anyway, um, <clears throat> thanks. Thanks for that image. 